What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode. So we are back at the sanctuary slash older facility. The one that definitely needs to be renovated. Which we're showing you some of the construction, which yes. you got some sheet pile behind us. So yes, we are gonna be talking about what we've accomplished so far, all the materials, and what we're building at the moment. But before we get into that guys, we have a very special competition we're releasing, or kind of more like a giveaway, uh, because we want one of you to visit us. So with this giveaway, Obviously 2020 has been a great year for us putting out videos. I mean, we've been having tons of fun putting videos out. Kyle does not get annoyed at me asking him to film videos at all. No, right? It's, all. It's, it's a great time. Uh, but what our goal is for 2021 is we're gonna be doing the year of giveaways. So you guys have been helping us uh, subscribing, commenting, liking, um, sharing our videos. We wanna do something to give it back. Now you guys always ask to come visit with the sanctuary not being probably gonna be done until the end of 2021. We wanna get some of you guys out here early yeah. so our goal is right now we're at 40,000 subscribers if we hit 50,000 subscribers by the end of January so January 31st 2021 what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be picking one of you guys one of the subscribers and we're gonna give you a tour of the sanctuary you're gonna be able to come here during construction see all the animals see the crocodiles snakes yep. tegus meet us hang out with us for the for a couple hours maybe the day yeah um, and really get a behind-the-scenes look at this now, one of you is gonna be winning that, but five of you guys are gonna be winning merchandise. So we'll be able to send merch all over the world um, and it'll be kind of a, a thank you. Now, to enter into the giveaway, what you guys gotta do, there's absolutely no fee for entry. All we ask is that you go back, uh, share your favorite video that we've done of 2020 on your Instagram, your Facebook, tag your friends, comment on as many videos as you can, because how you win this giveaway is making the most noise. If we see you and we see your commenting, sharing, um, getting your friends to subscribe, they're coming on there saying, hey, Bob sent me your guys' link, I subscribe because of him. The person that makes the most noise on here is gonna win. So we're gonna announce this competition like officially next week, but for you guys that have been watching all our videos, this is your head start. <laughs> so get to it, guys. All right, guys, so as you can see, there's a sheet pile there. There's a, sheet pile, a ton of sheet pile here. There's a bunch of tubs that will be put moving around. So there's a much more sheet pile here. You got a lot of sheet pile. I think you bought the whole warehouse. <laughs> and then some. They got chain link. We got quick creep for the chain link for the poles. We got the poles themselves. We got the chain link. We got extra tubs. We got more sheet pile. And then we have more sheet pile. How many warehouses did you buy? And then we have a bunch more sheet pile. And then wow. behind that, we have all the wood for the uh, for the caps, cypress for the tegus. So we got a little bit of everything here. But cool. if you turn around here, you can see all the ones we have built. And these are the smaller enclosures you guys have seen before. We're adding on to these, uh, making them longer, just because this is not just the size. They're actually getting bigger. That perimeter fence is going down. And all of this, guys, is going to be in the perimeter fence. So we are adding on to the perimeter substantially. So those three is going to be more of the uh, secluded area. That's going to be the Chinese alligator breeding program. Um, but these guys are going to be Philippine crocodiles in here. There's going to be cataphractus. They're going to be, let's see, what else are we going to add here? Uh, probably porosis saltwater crocodiles. Um, a lot of stuff in the greenhouse is coming out here. Uh, Osteolamus. Um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, probably freshwater crocodiles. In these enclosures. Are you putting any of the smaller Cubans in here? Uh, possibly, yes. Yes, we have that young male and then a young female. We could try to pair them off and see how they do. So these are, I believe, roughly 12 feet by 20 feet, maybe 18 feet. For the ponds? Yes, for the ponds themselves. And then you have uh, the perimeter around each side. Um, the sad thing is what I've noticed is a lot of people do land areas like that big around the whole pond. But they and that's always, all the land. always, always underestimate land use for crocodilians so that's why over here i'm gonna run this 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 is more just for a biosecurity barrier that the crocs can't splash back and forth that's why this is so high but the other sides that it's not gonna be crocs it's much lower so we'll have chain link on top of that better for viewing but um it'll still retain water if there's ever a flood event you know you're still looking um like two, two feet higher than what it was before so um plus you built this ground up as well yes yes we're building this up a foot and then this is going to run out here and then the enclosure like i said this is going down 
the enclosures are gonna come at least five to 10 feet past this. So they'll have this big grass area. We'll plant this with- So probably where the end of that old enclosure is, the that's, wood? That's probably to this pole here. This pole? Okay, th so yes, that is, it. I think, 14 foot wide. Um, you can't go in there. No, we'll go in there a little bit. But, um, so you can kind of get an idea. This whole thing's gonna be a land area. Yes, so I'm looking for probably 15, 20 feet of this area. And again, these are crocs that are less than seven foot in size. So this is a big area. And then they're also gonna have a shallow section over there. I mean, there's a lot going on here. Very exciting. So these, there's 10 of these enclosures for the smaller guys, and these are all, so sheet pile needs tie back. So these are all tied together just to hold the, uh, the walls in. Um, but what we do is we tie it back in on itself. So that pond is tied into that pond and they kind of support each other. Um, but honestly, once we have the water in there, it's a one-to-one -one ratio between the soil pushing in and, this, and the water pushing out. So the pressure so equalizes. The pressure equalizes, correct. But it's all about when we dig the ponds, um, we ever drain them to clean them out or whatnot, you just gotta have that assurance that will hold it. But over here, good God, what is happening? Wow, that's a lot of construction. <laughs> so Wait, what happened to your yard? Uh, yeah, uh, it's seen better days for sure, but it's very exciting. It is extremely exciting to see this process. I guys, I can't tell you how excited I am with this enclosure. I love those five new ponds, but each time we build a new pond, I'm learning something new. And this one has so many visual barriers, so many new innovative ideas that we've all come together collectively as Premier Predators and come up with cool ideas. You know, yes, I specialize in crocs, Ryan specializes in snakes, and uh, Christian and Haley specialize in training um, with the crocs as well. But guys, you know, I would say I, I definitely specialize in the, in the enclosure design and whatnot, but every single person has brought new ideas. And that's what's so exciting is having a group like this. So, you know, we will all collectively come up with innovative ways to set up these crocs that benefits themselves. And like I said in the meeting today, number one goal for this is crocodile enrichment and quality of life. And then second is public viewing, because again, I believe in, if they want to be seen, they can be, as long as the crocodiles are content with what they're doing. And if they're comfortable, they'll be out, but if not, they can be hidden away. So there are so many visual barriers in this enclosure. And again, it's one solid pond, but there's so many blockades and whatnot. And there's the water flowing throughout that all connect. But for example, this is like the small pond. This is a seclusion pond that if there's ever any issue, they can come over here and it's completely separated from other from the other the rest of the pond, other than a small hole just for water to flow through that is much smaller than a crocodile can fit through. What we're going to do is we're gonna make a ramp and a cave underneath here, but instead guys, what we're gonna do is build this in with sand, just have it about 18 inches down the sand. So it's gonna be a nice sandy shallow section and the seawall will hold it back. What we'll most likely do is put a a wood cap here, the crocodiles can roll over and go into the shallow section because if you have it down low, the problem is that the crocodiles really want to dig and they have, um, you know, a lot of crocodiles do, they can push all this sand out and fill in the deep section and then just wallow this out, which we don't want. So we want to kind of make this, you know, 18 inches to two foot down and then that be six foot deep. So um, if we do a cap that they can easily roll over and fall into here, it'd be perfect. So hold back the, you know, hold the banks, It'll keep all the sand in here, but they can still have the deep section and the shallow section. And again, another visual barrier. Most of these enclosures are going to have three, four, or five animals in each one. So obviously, there's got to be all these different channels and whatnot, just in case there's any issue. Now, another thing we just came up with is we're going to put a big cave out there uh, and then a shallow section. But guys, I kind of want to get away more of even having a platform, even with sand on top, just because I'm always worried about these crocs just scraping up against any wood or any concrete or whatnot. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run a, uh, a seawall across the wet, across the whole pond, and have it to be where a quarter of the pond, most like quarter to a third of the pond, be that shallow section as well. Because again, what I'm learning with the new five ponds is they love that shallow section. They utilize it tremendously. So I definitely want to utilize that here, or essentially implement that here and run it all the way across. And then most likely just have it where on each side, 
is a little shallower that they could easily swim into, but the middle is going to be um, sheet pile and then a cap on top that if they want to, they can roll over. But again, you had you got to remember with visual bearing for Crocs, you know their eyes are only about an inch off the water, so it doesn't need to be much to block view from one to the end or one to the other in the water. So what we can do is we can just keep it a little high like that, and then just do a wood cap on top that it blocks it about you know three to five inches, and then they can easily roll over it if they want to. So it's, again, it's just enriching visual barriers to block it, deep water, shallow sections. Um, plenty of area to really swim, utilize that tail, um, and I think we are really providing that in this enclosure. I love this sheet pile because it's like adult Legos, especially for crocodiles. I've used it for tortoises, crocodiles, look at that. That's cool how he just pushed it down and rolls over it. Um, but we're building four of these ponds, and we're putting Cubans in here, Americans in there. So uh, maybe the baby Niles will be going in the next one. So I'm really excited to see these come together. And this is obviously going to be ponds that are going to be on display for the public sanctuary. All right, so where we're standing, guys, is going to be the elevated walkway through this whole area here. And we're going to be about two foot above this. Actually, three foot above this because we're a foot down from there. So we're three, two foot above that line. Um, so we'll have a great view of the pond overall. And that's where people can come visit. They can walk on the boardwalk kind of and look into these enclosures. Correct. There's going to be... There's gonna be enclosures on either side. Four of these giant enclosures. There's gonna be 10 more. I mean, still big enclosures. I think 36 by 52. So that's still a very, very big enclosure. 36 by 52. How, how what's the dimensions on those ones so they can give kind those of perspective? Yeah. Those are roughly 25 by 35. Okay. Or 25 by 40. So th th these are the, the ones you're building over here are like medium sized ones. Yes. If you guys remember the Nile enclosure, the where the Nile pair used to be, their whole land area, that's going to be each enclosure here. So it's a very, very big area, actually bigger than that. That was, that was uh, 50 by 35. This is 52 by 36, so a little bit bigger. This is going to be the elevated walkway like we were talking about. And then there's going to be a four foot area around the entire pond that the crocodiles can lay on. Again, if they want to be more secluded, but still lay on, this, on the uh, sun, lay in the sun, on the sand, uh, they can be over there. Or if they don't care and want to be right up to the public, they can be right over here. But there's going to be this sandy area here, and this whole area here, essentially squared off, is going to be their grassy area. So that's where we can get in and work with the animals and um, you know, have plenty of space to, uh, to feed them and essentially work with them. Um, but yeah, that wraps up that enclosure, and you guys will definitely be seeing updates on it. I mean, it's changing day to day, so it's, it's exciting. But let's go over to the perimeter fence and show you guys where we were and where we're going to be. This line here is a new perimeter fence line. If you look down there, you can see all the poles lining up. We have big double gates here, and then it runs over here, and then it runs all the way down. So you can see we're adding, I think about 125 feet of fencing to the south, and then we're, head, we're fencing off, I mean, by 100 foot to the west, and then we're encompassing all that back area, which is going to be the alligator rescue program. And we will explain that further in another episode but that guys wraps up what we're building here we're actually getting another crew hopefully in the next week or two um, and then we'll be really knocking this out and hopefully we'll uh we'll have this all finished and ready for the public at least by uh the end of 2021 all right guys that wraps up the update at the uh sanctuary yeah if you like today's video make sure to like comment subscribe follow us on instagram also don't forget about that competition so make sure you're sharing all the videos uh Pick, uh, pick the best one that were the one you like the most, your favorite video, share that on Instagram, Facebook, tag us. The more we see you share and comment, the more of a chance you have to win. So we'll see you on the next one, guys. See you guys.